breaking news, ladies and gentlemen, insider trading is legal. Well, for politicians. Who says so? Politicians. Uh, for the rest of us, it's still illegal, just in case you were wondering. See, our story today comes from Nancy Pelosi, the queen, the absolute goddess of insider trading. She just made a legendary announcement today. Here it is. We're going to listen to it, bear witness to it. Take a watch. Insider just completed a five month investigation by the that 49 members of Congress and 182 senior congressional staffers have violated the Stock Act, um, the Insider Trading Law. I'm wondering if you have any reaction to that. And secondly, should members of Congress and their spouses be banned from trading individual stocks while serving in Congress? No, I don't know to the second one. Um, any, uh, we have a responsibility to report in the stock on the stock, but I don't, I'm not familiar with that five month review, but if the uh, people aren't reporting, they should be. Why yeah. Because uh, this is a free market and people, we are a free market economy. They should be able to participate in that. Okay. It's a free market. That's what she said. Should not ban lawmakers from trading individual stocks. So this is absolutely insane. What you're watching is her getting told that 49 members of Congress have violated something called the Stock Act, which the whole point of it was to prevent, to stop insider trading. And she says, well, look, we should just all be allowed to do it anyways, uh, because freedom. Now, I know if you're an average viewer, you may not fully understand the scope of what's going on here. So we have to back this up because the corruption just... It just runs deep. Honestly, guys, I don't even talk about scams of this magnitude much, mostly because you know, it's just political. People get weird about politics, but also because this is a, a special kind of scam, a legal scam, where <laughs> the people running the scam also make the laws. So, you know, it's never going to be illegal to do what they do. And even if it is, you'll never pin them down as actually committing the crime. So to give you guys some backstory, insider trading is obviously when you know some public information about a stock and you go trade based on that information. So for example, let's say I have a company in medicine and I hear about a mysterious China illness that we may be able to treat. If I know that information ahead of time and I go out and I buy or sell stocks based on that material information, I have committed a crime, right? If someone from Congress, from the government, Nancy Pelosi does the same thing, given that they know non-public information all the time, it is not a crime. They, they're, they're allowed to do that. Um, well, kind of. You see, it's a bit complicated. Obama signed this law in 2012, the Stock Act, which technically made it illegal for Congress to trade on insider information for this. But the thing is, is that no one's ever been convicted for this, despite lots of calls of insider trading. And the problem is it's not clear how anyone would ever be prosecuted for this because of something called the speech or debate clause, which prevents Congress from being questioned about things they talk about in their congressional duties or whatever. What this means is if you ever wanted to convict someone for this, you'd have to question them, but you can't question them because of this rule. In fact, this was written about in the challenges of prosecuting congressional insider trading. It's a law article. Basically, they're saying, look, in theory, this is illegal, but there's not much of a way to actually find this out or pin them down. It'd be like if I was banned from having like pink shoes in my house or something like that. But I also had a law that said you could never search my house. The question is, is it actually illegal if you can never prove that I'm breaking the law? If you don't actually have the ability to ever look into what I'm technically not supposed to be doing. So that's the conundrum. There's a law that they can't insider trade, but there's no way to prove that they're insider trading because we can't ask them questions per this speech or debate clause thing. But of course, if that's the case, then why do we have a bunch of reports from places like Insider saying that the Cong Congress and top uh, Capitol Hill staff have violated the Stock Act hundreds of times? Well, the reason is simple, because there's actually multiple parts to the Stock Act. One of them, the only real thing that actually is going on with the Stock Act is that they have to report what they're investing in at the bare minimum. But they're not even doing that. According to this incredible Insider report on it, They've identified 49 members of Congress who failed to report their financial trades. And then they go to list all these people 
who have failed to do so. And surprise, surprise, they come from both sides of the aisle and they're making a lot of money on the pandemic, ladies and gentlemen, trading those tech stocks, trading those pharmaceutical stocks, ladies and gentlemen. And this is what Nancy Pelosi was asked about. And she basically dodged and said, no, there's no problem here. It's a free market, bro. It's freedom, bro. But the thing is, it's not freedom. This is a problem. These people go to these subcommittees. They have all these special meetings with Google, Apple. They're expected to rule and make laws about these companies that they might have a vested interest in because they're investing in them or they're shorting them or longing them, whatever. And the thing is, is like, look, even breaking these laws, like uh, this reporting law, what's the penalty for it? Well, if you break it, you know what? You pay a $200 fee. That's right. The price for not reporting potential insider trading as a congressperson is $200. But get this, even those tiny fines, which is like less than a speeding ticket, they don't even pay that. Apparently, a lot of people have said there's no consistent penalty system, and it's not even clear these people have paid the fines. According to Insider, it's a situation that ethics experts say leaves the public in the dark, lets Congress off the hook, and renders the Stock Act, which is intended to defend against insider trading, toothless. So that's the real context here. There's a law against insider trading, but it's useless. And the part that's supposed to work, this account reporting, you know, what you invested in, isn't being enforced. And so many people believe the solution is to ban lawmakers from being able to trade single stocks banning their spouses from being able to do that. Because for many of them, it's not Nancy Pelosi who's investing, it's her husband. It's not Rand Paul who's investing, it's his wife, and they just happen to make killer trades. The idea is they'd be able to trade the S&P 500, mutual funds, stuff like that, but not be able to trade individual stocks like normal people because, well, they are not normal people. And this just makes sense, right? Like, like if you're going to make laws investing in Google and you know private information about Google, you shouldn't be able to then go and invest in how it's going to do tomorrow. I mean, the level of corruption we're talking about is so basic, so bare minimum. It's absolutely insane. And so I and many people uh, kind of support banning this. And that's what Nancy Pelosi said no to. Said no the lawmakers, we need access to those single stocks. We got to play the stock market. It's our fundamental right as insanely rich Congress people. And obviously what she's actually defending here um, is her right to get insanely rich from her insider knowledge. Like, for example, when her husband made a $5 million profit from betting on Google right before Congress had an antitrust bill. I mean, was he just lucky? Was... <laughs> That's the ultimate question. Like you have to really be born yesterday to actually fall for the fact to think that this isn't insider trading. You know, was Rand Paul's wife lucky when she bought shares in Gilead right before the pandemic? That's a pharmaceutical company, by the way, that did very well. They're the ones who actually make remdesivir. I mean, was that luck? Was Rand Paul's wife just the luckiest investor in the world or was it a crime, right? Those are actually our two options. Are these investors just truly that good or are they committing crimes which are technically impossible to prosecute due to weird speech or debate laws that are on the books i, I don't know i'm going to leave that up to you and here's what i want to leave you with as food for thought this is a graphic created by unusualwhales.com who tracks a lot of these politicians and it ranked the top 20 house members who purchased securities in 2020 and at the top of the list trading the most apparently was Nancy Pelosi, or, or her husband at least. And it's worked out quite well for her too, since she's now worth $46 million, despite making only $220,000 a year. I know that sounds like a lot, but at her current salary, it would take her 200 years to make as much money as she has right now. And that would be if she never spent a penny and never paid taxes. Now, obviously, that's not the case. She's not 200 years old, despite how she looks. Where did all this money come from? I mean, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. I guess it's just amazing to see all these politicians getting so rich just by being in the free market. I don't know. I guess my conclusion is this. It's a scam, but it's a legal one, I guess, for now. So thanks for watching. Pump the stock. See you tomorrow.